Hi, my name is Peter Studer, and I'm here at PowerTest today to walk you through some of the basic maintenance for your water brake engine dynamometer. We typically like to perform our maintenance on our engine dynos in monthly, three month, and six month intervals. And these time intervals are more just a rule of thumb, so if you are a high volume testing facility, we'd recommend that you perform these slightly more often. Um, I'm just going to walk you through the basic steps today, but if you're curious about what the specific components are that need to be checked on your dyno, I'd recommend that you consult the maintenance section on your manual or reach out to your power test service rep for more questions. The first thing we're going to want to do on a monthly basis is perform basic lubrication on the shaft bearings. Uh, for this, we're going to look at the zerks on each one of the end bells and then just lightly clean them off to make sure that we don't have any residue built on them before we lubricate them. Uh, we're going to want to use Mobilith SHC100 or the equivalent and just lightly grease them. After that, we're going to want to look at the seals on each one of the end bells. Uh, depending on what dyno model you have, you're either going to have a Teflon seal or a gland packing seal. Um, and then to check to make, she, make sure that these are operational, we're going to want to look at the um, weep holes on the bottom of the dyno. If there's any leakage whatsoever, you may consider tightening and or replacing uh, whatever model seal that you have. After we perform that basic maintenance on your engine dyno itself, uh, we're going to want to look and do some basic inspection on the accessory components that you have uh, throughout the rest of your test cell. Uh, one of the primary things and first things we want to look at is the drive shaft guard. Take a look at the securing pins and hinges and make sure those are properly lubricated and functional. In addition to that, we want to look at some other elements including the engine cart, uh, the water pressure regulator accumulator, uh, the cooling columns, and any other accessory components that you use on a regular basis. We're going to want to look at these things for things such as corrosion, rust, uh, and any adhesions that might happen where it's going to inhibit your basic functionality of the equipment. For our three month maintenance, you're going to want to perform everything we've outlined in the monthly maintenance setup. Uh, in addition, we're going to want to do a couple of additional tasks. The first thing we'll want to look at the water dyno, or the, the dyno water supply and see if you have a Y strainer equipped. If you do, you're going to want to clean it out uh, for any particles that have accumulated in the three months of prior use. After that, we want to look at the drive shaft. First, we're going to want to look at the drive shaft slip joint um, and perform basic cleaning and lubrication of that. After that, we're going to want to look at the universal joints on either end of the drive shaft um, and perform that same task. For this, we're going to want to use NLGI number two mineral oil grease. The last thing that we want to do every three months is take a look at the engine cart center block and screw mechanism. For this, we want to clean it as necessary and then apply grease. Uh, using that same NLGI number two mineral oil grease. Every six months we just have a few more steps that we need to perform. Uh, we're going to want to do the monthly maintenance steps that we outlined as well as the three month steps, but in addition we want to take a look and apply some lubrication as necessary to the load cell ball joints. Um, we also want to apply minimal lubrication um, to the trunnion bearings on each of the side of the end bell. Uh, for this, not more than one or two pumps is going to be required. Finally, we want to take a look at the engine cart casters and then apply chassis lube as necessary to both the caster axles and the swivel bearings. Um, finally, and you can do this on a more frequent basis, is just ensure that your dyno is calibrated correctly. Um, we have tech tips available for uh, calibration for your torque temperature and pressure available in our tech tips section, um, as well as in your owner's manual for PowerNet and your X-Series engine dyno. In addition to the monthly, three month, and six month maintenance tips, we also have put in place some requirements for long term storage. Um, we define long term storage as anything that's going to be sitting in place for over three months. Um, and we have these requirements to prevent corrosion or any other damage that your dyno might sustain while it's just sitting there. Um, we're not going to outline those today, but they are outlined in your owner's manual. And if you have any questions about that or anything else that we've talked about today, we encourage you to reach out to your power test service rep. They're readily available to make, answer any questions that you have about your test system. Well, that's all that we have for our tech tip today. Um, as always, power test is here to make it better. Uh, and we hope that this tech tip has done just that.